um, this session, we are fortunate to be hearing from Lauren Kane and Tim Jones with a all on B Corp. Um, a quick reminder that um, if you want to check out other sessions, do look at the program, which I will drop into the chat in a minute, and you can click on the links for those to transform you into a separate room um, and watch um, some recordings of the sessions later as well. Uh, now over to you, um, Lauren and Tim, and yeah, we're really looking forward to this topic um, and learning um, with, with everyone here. Kia ora. Awesome. Kia ora. Kia ora. Thanks, Erica. Um, well, Tim, um, I think we should just introduce ourselves firstly. Um, kia ora, That's everyone. Yeah, I'm Lauren Kane. Um, I am um, the Certification and Growth Manager at B Lab um, Australia and Aotearoa New Zealand. Um, and I'm excited here uh, to be to uh, be here today. I'm going to have a sip of coffee um, already. <laughs> Got cotton mouth. Um, Tim, I'll leave it to you. So yeah, kia ora. Um, uh, I, I also go with a Shemai. I'm half Welsh, so let's get you fully multicultural. Um, <laughs> so I'm Tim. Yeah, so I think well, I'm Tim. I run a company called Grow Good. Um, we are a certified B Corporation, and we help other companies become B Corp certified. And I was just thinking, probably what we should really explain to people is what is B Lab versus a B Corp, because sometimes people think there's mm -hmm. like these two competing frameworks or systems. So yeah, maybe if you we start off with well. What is B Lab and how does that relate to B Corps? Yeah, um, I think that's a great starting point. So B Lab is the organization, nonprofit organization that um, holds the standards and works with companies um, in order to certify them to become a B Corp. So um, Tim, I mean, like you are a B Corp, uh, your company is. Mm -hmm. So from your lens, <clears throat> what what did that journey look like? Yeah, so... So yeah, like Lauren said, so, so B Lab is the organization that runs the certification framework, which allows companies to become a certified B Corporation. So yeah, we first certified as a B Corporation way back in 2016, which is literally a lifetime ago. It feels like that. Um, so we were B Corp number six in New Zealand. Um, and it's quite interesting. I think it'd be interesting just to reflect on the process over that time. Like back then, the process was pretty quick and easy because there just weren't that many people interested in B Corp to be honest mm. um and that's something that I know B Lab and, and we've all been working on over the last few years and, and we're definitely seeing more more people interested in B Corp so yeah my first certification I, it kind of probably took me about a month of just sitting down to do the questions and then literally within about two weeks I got an auditor um so the, the <laughs> so Lauren's like we'll, we'll explain why Lauren's life in that in a minute so the, the way you get your B Corp certification is you can go online and if you just search or Google B Impact Assessment or B Corp Impact Assessment, you can create an account for free and go and um, basically um, take a series of questions on this online assessment to see how your business performs against five main areas. And once you hit over 80 out of 200 points on that initial assessment, you then submit it for verification for one of, by one of the awesome B Lab team who are the really smart auditors who go through and go, yeah, no, you answered that question completely wrong. And no, you don't have any evidence for that. So you're not getting those points. So yeah, back in the day in 2016, yeah, it was about, yeah, about a two to three week turnaround to get an auditor. Um, it has been, and I think in the UK, it is still up to something like 18 months to get hold of an auditor because so many people want to be a B Corp, mm. which is quite cool in some ways. It is pretty cool. And um, it's funny, you mentioned the, the wait times. Uh, I, I had a giggle because, um, yeah, it's actually gone down in our region quite significantly, which is which is excellent. We're down to an all time low of um, being about two months to get into your first auditing um, round, um, which I'm you know is amazing. Um, but when when the um, COVID nineteen crisis actually uh, started, we we expected that um, companies would not want to become B corps. They had other areas to focus on. Um, but it was exactly the opposite. So there was this boom um, throughout the world, um, which was just a beautiful glimpse into to companies and humanity. Um, you know, uh, a lovely commentary there uh, in, in the, um, the, the light of crisis. Um, but I just realised, Tim, we haven't actually assessed the room about who knows yeah. what B Corp is. Yeah, do, um, do any of you even us... know vaguely what we're talking about? Or yeah. are we, or are we, we preaching to the converted? Um, maybe yeah. just put in the, in the chat a little thumbs up 
um, if, if you know what a B Corp is, may, maybe do you even work for one? Or can you, do you, um, I would typically say, do you eat one in the morning? Because there's quite a few breakfast companies that seem to be B Corp certified. Mm -hmm. Or do you use one in your shower um, or in your bathroom? Because um, there's quite a few Holton Beauty brands that, that are B Corp yeah. certified. Um, or you might be wearing one. Uh, you might be wearing Kathmandu or We Are uh, clothing. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few out there. So we've got a few okay. people. Yeah, a few people know what it is. Um, okay. So Adam, he says he's got, he's got a vague idea. Hopefully we're making the idea slightly less vague. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I, think it's, I think it's interesting. So I, I guess also just for a bit of context. So L Lauren is, was a last minute replacement into this event. Um, we, we, were, we did have a different um, representative from B-Lab, but they've unfortunately moved on from the organization. So Lauren and I were kind of last minute um, trying to work out what we do in this session. And we, and we figured we'd keep it pretty open pretty q and a -E. um so if at any point you've got a question for us just like shout out and we'll make this as interactive as we, as we can rather than listening to yeah. me and lauren waffle a lot about b corp which we could do possibly for four days um, yeah exactly we should probably like, go there's probably a record we could look for that like what's the longest two people have had a conversation about b corp for let's uh, uh, i mean like it's my bread and butter and it's your bread and butter so <clears> um <laughs> and we might be here forever Erica it's, it's, has to cut, has <laughs> yeah, she'll be pulling this out. But it's interesting <laughs> you mentioned the COVID because um, hmm. I, I always like to reflect on where B Corp came from. And so B Corp was founded, or, or, or sorry, B Lab was founded in about 2006 on the back of um, crisis and tragedy. So the yeah. guy who was the co founder of B Lab, a guy called J. Cohen Gilbert, he used to be um, the co, well, he was also the co founder of And One, which was a basketball apparel brand. And their whole aim at and one was basically to sell more basketball shoes than nike that was the, that was the thing that was driving them up until um jay's sister was one of the people trapped in the twin towers in new york in september 11 2001 and luckily she was pulled she was pulled out she was one of the survivors um and then a week or two later one of his close friends at and one passed away and, and he had what i call the existential wet fish to the face moment um a lot of people in christchurch had that moment during the earthquakes where you know kind of what what am i thinking about what what's life all about and and I, and I think COVID was that moment too, um, where a lot of where I, I know as we said as a movement we kind of thought well this could be the death knell for for um, uh, for B Corp because it, typically when in tough economic times the first thing people do is look at certifications and other payments and go okay well that can go um, so yeah really um, really interesting that crisis can actually lead to a change of consciousness and and do, to do more good. Mm, hundred percent, and that's exactly what we experienced. Um, I think. A lot of people were drawn to the B Corp certification because it is holistic. It's not just about finance. It's not just about um, environmental standards or products. Um, it is, um, you know, Tim mentioned five impact areas that take into consideration your governance, how you treat your workers, um, how you work within your own community, um, how you treat your customers. Um, and and the environment. So it is quite holistic. And I think a lot of people and and um, companies and then their consumers were drawn to that, um, which um, I think is absolutely excellent. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And that's, um, we're typically seeing there's, there's kind of four main reasons why people are interested in, in B Corp. Well, I'll, I'll say five. The, the best reason is because they want to do it and they think it's a really cool thing to do. Um, but, but well, not just cool, but it's it's the right thing to do in terms of actually we want to be measuring and reporting our social and environmental impact. Um, the beyond that, there's kind of five, four, sorry, four other reasons why people typically look at B Corp. And what we are seeing is customer pressure, um, employee pressure, supply chain pressure, and then I, I guess I'd call it investment stroke regulatory pressure, um, where increasingly, if you're a bigger company, um, there's regulation coming where you have to be at least going to be reporting your environmental impact and you know kind of while you're at it it's like well we might as well just dig in and and, and look at our social impact as well so um yeah those would be the reasons you know that we're seeing people and, and again i think covid just accelerated people's um, thoughts and opinions around that yeah 100 percent um it's a way for businesses to keep ahead of the curve of that regulatory um in you know tidal wave that's coming um which is a great thing um the um uh, the other thing that I was going to mention is um, just speaking of the tidal wave and the sheer number of um, B Corps now globally, um, we've jumped considerably. Um, we've, I think when I joined B Lab, um, we were at 5,000 globally. Now we're at over 7,000. And in this region, which is Australia and New Zealand combined, um, we're over 600. 
Um, we are a rapidly growing region, which is, um, and New Zealand, uh, especially in that, um, is is actually the one that is experiencing exponential growth as more and more companies um, decide to um, not only you know talk the talk but walk the walk and have the circle B to prove it. Um, yeah, hundred percent. So we've got we've got a question in the chat. Um, so the first one's from Carolyn. Really interested in hearing about moving from baby startup to B Corp and are there stepping stones we should be looking at? Um, got any thoughts on that, Lauren? Well, I would say um, the first thing is, is that the, the B impact assessment, which is the 200 questions over the five different impact areas is a free tool. Um, so baby steps, I would say, start looking at that and get familiar with it um, for sure. Um, there are great pointers that might you might see and go, oh, actually, as a startup, I haven't actually built that into my um, my business model yet, but I will now. Um, I think actually using the B Impact yeah. Assessment while you're setting up your business is an excellent framework in itself. What do you think, Tim? 100%. Yeah. Um, we get this question a lot from startups or, yeah, even, pe yeah, even people who, who've got an idea and haven't even, you know, got the company registered yet. It's really, as I've said, you know, to go and look at the impact assessment, it's completely free to go and create the account and just look at stuff and, and just start building the business around how you want to build it. Because, you know, you, you might not be employing anyone today, but if you've got a fast growth startup, maybe in 12 months, you might have your first couple of employees. Okay, so look at look at the worker section, think about some stuff like, well, do I want to offer ownership to employees? Um, do I want to, um, yeah, offer uh, health, you know, um, say, you know, healthcare products above and beyond what's provided by the government. Is that stuff that I want to do? Well, if it is, I need to start factoring that, factoring that into my budgets now so that I know, you know, and for me, it's always, it's always like, do the most good with what you've got, you know, so don't stress about, oh, I, I, I can't build a, a 150 point B Corp from day one. Don't stress about it. Do, do what you can with what you've got, but just, you know, use it as a framework to, to build the business towards. Does that answer your question? Excellent. Great. Cool. And if certification is something that you decide you wish to do as a business, um, the only, we have eligibility requirements. So you have to be a, a business. Um, we don't certify um, nonprofit organizations or government organizations. Um, operations for 12 months doesn't mean you have to turn over a profit or revenue for 12 months, just operations. Um, and there's some other eligibility criteria, um, which is listed on the B Corporation website. Um, about controversial industries, which I encourage everyone to have a squeeze at um, before they go down their B Corp certification journey. But even if you're not eligible as a business, please use the free tool. It's there for the taking. It's there for the 100%. use. Um, please, it's our yeah. gift to you. <laughs> um, and there's, yeah. there's, there's always just so many questions that you just see people go, ah, I just never thought about that before. Yeah. I never thought about that before. Because typically we've not been conditioned to think about that kind of stuff. And you know, your, your only duty when you're launching a business is to trade solvently and legally. There's no, there's no other criteria around that. So yeah, get, get amongst it and, and um, yeah, see, see what you know. Yeah. Um, we've got another, we've got a couple of questions. Uh, so Adam has asked, I'd love to hear about the fuck and puffer of the assessment framework itself. How was it developed and how was it kept up to date and relevant? I, I'm firmly going to throw that straight to, I'm, I'm doing that because that's where Lauren sat on my screen. Yep. Um, as the <laughs> certification yeah. expert, um, mm. what do you know? So um, the B Impact Assessment is updated um, every three years. Uh, admittedly, this uh, cycle um, is taking a little bit longer because we are doing our biggest update of standards to date, um, and it's called the Evolution of Standards. Um, and there will be more comms coming out about that from B Lab um, over the next year or so. Um, so we we keep on top of it by constantly working on the standards and trying to keep um, you know, on top of it, uh, knowing that business in itself um, probably outpaces us considerably. Um, so we learn from our stakeholders as well. Um, we have a standards body. Um, it's uh, B Lab Global. They sit separate to say um, who I work for, which is B Lab A A N Z. Um, we service the community, and the standards body needs to sit quite separately to maintain their integrity and their standards. So they work constantly in the background um, to make sure it's relevant, up to date, um, and, and with stakeholders considered throughout. 
Um, I hope that answers your question um, quite a top level, Adam, but happy to take, you know, go more in depth um, with you in, in person. Um, Tim, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I guess, I mean, my, my sort of understanding of how it's developed over the years. So when um, Jay, Adam and Bart, um, sorry, yeah, Andrew and Bart launched B Corp or, or the B Corp framework in 2006, it's kind of, in, in my mind, it's like they, they did a, a high level materiality assessment of yes. wh wh where, where is business doing good and bad? And how do we, so, so the, the B Corp assessment itself is, is a point scoring tool currently. So you need to score the, a minimum of 80 out of 200 to then submit for the independent verification by a B lab auditor. And it's basically a, a positive screening tool. So you get rewarded for things that you are doing. You don't get points taken off of what you're not doing. But there are some questions and considerations around, okay, well, have you thought about the unintended consequences of doing ABC or what have you? So yeah, at the high level, when, when they launched it, they kind of looked at, okay, and, and this is partly, I guess, why not for profits aren't really in the B Corp mix, because typically not for profits are, have been solving the problem. And historically, typically business has been causing problems, um, you know, due to its, um, I guess, focus on just shareholder primacy. So yeah, at, at a high level, they kind of go, well, let, let's see where business either is causing concern and or how do we reinforce good? And the point system basically then rewards you for doing more good. Um, and so, yeah, over the years, as I guess, as some challenges have maybe been solved or they become less of an issue, there's less of a focus on those questions. And then as other things pop up, plus, as Lauren said, you know, on, on every question in the assessment, you can provide feedback on every single question and say, I don't, think, I don't think this question is relevant or, you know, th there's a drop down list of about, I don't know, 10 or 15 options you can say about why you, you think this question could be changed. So th th that's the one thing I think is really impressive about B-Lab is the, is the um, availability and the options for stakeholder feedback on what is a, I mean, how these people create the assessment. I mean, I wouldn't even know where to start. You know, question one, I don't know, what do we start with? I don't know, just write something down. Um, yes, yeah, so it's constantly evolving. And, and I, I, I would urge everyone to get involved, even if you're not a B Corp, but if you're a concerned citizen in the business for good space, you, you can still have input on the draft standards that, that are being mm -hmm. discussed right now. So yeah, hopefully yeah, that answers have... um, Adam's question. Yeah, we actually have a, a couple of um, standards being developed at the moment, um, which we're inviting stakeholders to, to um, partake in um, with feedback. Um, so any interested party is welcome to do that. Um, so yeah, we can um, find the link. Uh, when I get a quiet moment, I'll add it into <laughs> the uh, chat. Um, we have a question from Sho. Keen to hear how B Corp, B Lab would support large corporates uh, to be certified as a B Corp um, in Australia uh, and New Zealand or Australasia. Um, so, um, one thing that I would like to note is that the B impact assessment, when you start, uh, when you set it up, will ask you some questions about your company, the makeup of your company. Uh, so we'll ask you the size of your company, where you're based, um, how many different locations you may have, um, the industry um, that you're in and the subset industry that you're in. And based on that, you will get a tailored B impact assessment. So not all B impact assessments are like for like. So um, say a small business um, like Carolyn's would not be seeing the same B impact assessment that say a Kathmandu saw. Uh, so that's one, one way that, um, you know, uh, large corps are supported um, by the tailoring of a B impact assessment. Um, depending on the complexity of businesses, there are different um, steps throughout the process that you need to take. Uh, so that that is one thing that um, my role is, is actually support, support large businesses throughout the journey. Um, you get, um, you would talk to me a little bit more. We will go through different application processes and steps. Um, and I would essentially hold your hand. Um, and also folks like Tim and Tamara, who's also on this call. Um, we have an absolute wonderful network of B consultants who are there to also help um, small and large corporations through their B Corp journey um, with the, the technical know-how and also the standard knowledge um, that you may just be a little bit unsure on and how do you apply it to your company in your particular context? Yeah. 
it's I just I'd reflect on that as well. It's, it's interesting because a lot of people say, oh, it's really hard for small businesses if they're a small business because we don't have any resource and time to do it. And then people in big businesses go, yeah, but this is really hard for us because it's complex. And I have to try and tie down 50 people across 10 countries to get the information from them. Um, there probably is like a Goldilocks sized company in, in that proper medium sized company where you can get information quickly and you can kind of build a team around it. Um, yeah, the, the, I think the challenges that big companies face is quite often stakeholder engagement because yeah. particularly if they're publicly listed, you know, you've got to get shareholder agreement that that we're actually going to, because there, I think that's one thing we haven't all, already mentioned is for you to become a B Corp pretty much in any um, global uh, jurisdiction uh, now, you have to be willing and able to update your company's governing documents, which in New Zealand would be a constitution to say that this company will at all times consider the impact of its operations on its stakeholders including workers, community, customers, planet, et cetera. So if you're, if you're a big company, typically the bigger the company, the more you have to navigate a lot of opinions around, is that actually what we want to do? Whereas typically smaller startups and, and even the medium companies, they're founder led still or family owned. Mm -hmm. and, and they're like, we, we, we want to do this. We, 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 you know, we, we're already thinking this way. It's going to be an easy win just to, to, to change the, uh, the constitution or to get one written up. So yeah, I think... We've worked with one particularly large company, and it it it's it was really interesting uh, having spent so many years working with smaller companies just to sort of see how much longer it just takes to move a big beast. I used to work for Johnson and Johnson way back in the days. So I had some recollections of how slow big companies can be. Yeah, so it's it's kind of almost more a stakeholder engagement piece with large companies because you you've got to bring everyone on the journey. Whereas in smaller companies, pretty much everyone's just raring to go and, and you can yeah that would be my yeah. one big observation Super agile and dynamic way more agile yeah 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 all right um dennis um i haven't skipped any questions no um are you moving towards uh, more new zealand relevant assessment criteria uh things like leed and accident insurance are more relevant in the u.s um I, if i've understood your question correctly dennis um B, B Lab is a global standard. So for it to become um, the assessment and the questions to become more relevant to one region would be fairly difficult. Um, am I understanding your question correctly? I, I, I think that's what is being asked, but yeah. Can, yeah. Um, so because it is a global standard, it, it has to, um, yeah, it can't be really tailored to different regions across the world. We can try and understand um, the context of, of different regions, say New Zealand, um, and, and apply it. Um, we do have a look at, you know, equivalencies of certifications that you may have in your region. Uh, like, for instance, uh, BioGrow would be considered, even though it's not necessarily something over overseas, we would consider that um, a standard that we would give the nod to and uh, award credit for in within the B impact assessment. Um, and I'm not too sure about accident insurance, what you mean there, but um, yeah, I hope that answered your question. Feel, feel free to to yeah, pop up on the on video. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go crazy. Um, if While you're considering doing that, um, I would just say, yeah, as, as Lauren said, it, th this is the challenge between it being globally relevant. And so, you know, particularly for a company that's operating globally or, or exporting mm. or, or doing something internationally, Part of the value of the B Corp certification is it it is globally recognised, and so it's it's really tough. Um, what I would say though is we're really lucky in New Zealand because you know we get, particularly under the workers section, pretty much given points because we have things like state you know state mandated leave entitlement, state mandated uh, parental leave entitlement. Um, we have a, a free healthcare system. So sometimes you massively benefit, and sometimes mm. you lose points because it's not recognised. But in general, you pretty much find it'll even out over the assessment. There'll be a couple that you don't get, but there'll be a few more that you do get. And you kind of, you know, that that's that's the challenge. But I think the, the risk, and, and I've seen this having spent a good decade in the sort of business for good sustainability arena, the more diverse and the more um, niche certifications are, actually the less valuable they are because no one's heard of it. And so, you know... We, Theoretically, a bunch of us could create a business for good framework just in New Zealand. But if you want to take that outside of New Zealand, no one knows what it means. Whereas this global community, global movement of companies that people are increasingly recognized, uh, for me, that that trumps the local 
um, value. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I might have just confused that. Dennis with Adam. Sorry, I just got the the uh, the chat wrong there. Um, Adam, I've just noticed your um, message here. Um, you're curious about the relationship between B Lab Global and the frontline folks. I'm assuming you think the frontline folks are, are, are me, <laughs> um, who work with. Um, yep, yep. <laughs> thumbs up. The real uh, workers. <laughs> and 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 Tim. Um, so we we have a very close relationship with B Lab Global. Um, to be honest, I talk to them daily. Um, they uh, we we what we call an interdependent network. So we're we're constantly um, feeding back, feeding forward, um, trying to we're engaging where their stakeholder, they're our stakeholder. So we uphold those values like uh, when it comes to decision making. So it is um, quite uh, fluid. Um, you know, they do hold the standards and they do maintain the standards and implement the standards. Um, and uh, it is our job as the local um, regional partner to, to help our companies in our regions understand how they're applied um, and, and kind of like translate them, so to speak. Uh, so great working relationship. Um, can be fun at times, but we, we um, definitely love our, our colleagues over there. And I, I would say, yes, as some, you know, we support quite a few companies through B Corp. The, the local crew, they're always really like, I, I, I mean, I feel sorry for Lauren because it's normally me spamming her going, hey, Loz, um, really random one here. Can, does this like, does this count for this one? And can we sneak this one? And can, and then she's really good. She'll go, look, I'll go and take it to the global team. And then within, depending on how big and, and weird the question is, the global team will come back really quickly and, and either go, Okay, yeah, we see where you're coming from on that one. Yeah, we will let that one. Or yeah, nah, sorry guys, nice try, but mm. nah, that's that's not going to count. So it is, and, and again, it's it's tough because you know obviously a certification needs to be pretty rigid and know this is the bar, but it does have that little bit of flexibility in it to say yeah, but actually locally this this is an equivalent or this is just because there is you know that is quite quite often the challenge, but that's just how we do it in New Zealand. And it's and so you know as we get more and more B corps, we can have a little bit of influence and get. It's all. I almost say like doing my job is almost more like a defence lawyer than a sustainability specialist because I'm I'm trying to help you get the point by be you being able to prove that you're doing what you say you're doing. And so we kind of we kind of do build a little bit of a precedent um, case, which you know Lauren mm -hmm. can then say, hey, look, there's five companies that now do this in New Zealand. We actually do think that that could be a benchmark. Could we have that locally? So yeah, they're they're pretty good, but for such a big system that is all encompassing yeah yeah it's definitely um you know B, B Lab global uses their global partners which is um, australia and Aotearoa and new zealand um to keep their finger on the pulse essentially uh so we definitely um, work with all of our companies in our region to to see you know are there precedents that need to be set um and so you know we're a, a room of trendsetters essentially if we want to be uh which is really cool i think Um, what else have we got? Yeah. What, what? Who's next? Adam's, Adam's just smashing out the questions. Oh, um, Adam. <laughs> um, yeah, the original process. So do you have information about the original process the founders of B Corp went through to assess the things? Off, off the top of my head, I don't. Uh, my, my kind of vague understanding is, is they you know, they were pretty well-heeled, um, fairly connected business guys. Um, so Jay and Bart had both. Um, Jay was CEO and co-founder of um, Hand One. Bart was chief operating officer and CFO and I think president. And then Andrew Castoy was a Wall Street banker. So the three of them were pretty well connected um, sort of business types. And my understanding is they kind of just went to some other big business guys that they knew and said, hey, like, here's a first draft of some questions that we think a business should be asked about how it's doing more, more than beyond making money. I guess the other thing to that is when, when Jay had his kind of epiphany of, hey, it's not about just making the money. He, he went back into and one and set up a whole bunch of stuff so they created mm. opportunity for worker ownership um they brought in like massage therapy and yoga treatment into the office um they worked with some local charities to do um leadership outreach programs to act with you in philadelphia where they were based and they'd worked with their supply chain to try and get better conditions so i guess having gone through a little bit of their own journey they had an idea of where business could make a difference but yeah other than that yeah lauren i don't know if you've got any more to add to that 
I think someone had a, a link into politics as well along the way, uh, and uh, the Benefit Corp uh, legislation yes. was also developed um, out of Washington. Uh, it's something that we don't have in our region. We update our constitutional um, documents, uh, but in America, there is an actual entity that you can create um, a Benefit Corp, uh, which is pretty funky and cool. Um, just to add some additional <laughs> information there. Um, yeah. Okay. Fiona. Following Fiona's on coming, how... She's coming through. She's got two questions. She's yeah. Ooh, ooh, oh, no, ooh. sorry. No, it's Fiona and Paula. Sorry. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Following on from how hard is it for larger companies question and chat. How about a business unit that is part of a much bigger business? Can a business unit be certified or does the total wider group of businesses have to be certified? Um, that's an excellent question. And it is a case by case basis, Fiona. Um, we have something that we call the complete and distinct criteria, which uh, a lovely B consultant or B lab can assist you with, um, where um, if a company um, is uh, had their own P&L, have uh, their own uh, management, um, uh, they have control of supply, demand, um, sales, uh, they may be considered complete and distinct enough from their parent to certify as a unit. However, it does take a little bit of digging. Uh, so for instance, we have in um, a good example of uh, one in our region would be, uh, I'm thinking Unilever, yep. um, Australia, New Zealand, um, were certified independently of, of Unilever Global, uh, and that's because they met the very rigorous com complete and distinct criteria. So um, that is a step that we would take with you um, to determine, and uh, we would then uh, map out and scope um, what certification and the certification journey would mean for you and potentially your parent. Yeah, it, it, it's definitely a, a chat with someone on that one because um, th there are, because I, I believe I'm correct in saying that there are some risks that if, if you are complete and distinct, but you are connected to a company, if you certify, that can trigger a meeting that the parent company might have to certify within a certain yes. period of time. So you want to be really, really sure. Otherwise, you're going to be a very unpopular person, particularly <laughs> at a board meeting. <laughs> Hang on, we just had a, a letter from this B lab saying that we have to be a B Corp by next year. <laughs> yeah. And that so, would be laid out well in advance. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. we wouldn't we wouldn't have a company <laughs> or a sub subsidiary certify without um, the notification of any kind of requirement on a parent. Uh, so you would be well uh, well aware and being able to uh, consult with any global team or exec or GLT um, global leadership teams um, well ahead of time. So no nasty surprises. <laughs> Right, Adam's back. Uh, following on from the tips for startups on the pathway, Correro, is there anything, Tim, is there anything you'd wish you'd known earlier that would have made your accreditation process easier? That's a really great question because back then, I, I mean, I, I was a startup business myself. Like my business was, was literally a year old. Um, there was so much I didn't know about everything. And there's still quite a lot I don't know about much things, many things. Um, I think for me, if it, when it's your first time round, the key is just going in with a mindset and intent that I want to achieve this. And as a startup, and, and I'm presuming therefore a slightly smaller business, as we said, you're, you're really nimble and you can just, you can just implement stuff that, that you didn't know existed. Um, yeah. I don't think there's anything specific that I can think of that I wish I'd kind of known. Um, yeah. I, th I think it's just, just most people that, that want to do it that they're so committed to doing it that you, you're going to do it you know what i mean you, you it, there's going to be some hard times there's going to be some introspection there's going to be some late nights filling in spreadsheets possibly um but it's all for a really great cause so um yeah i feel like i've not answered your question very well so i'll, I'll ponder on it a little bit more but yeah i don't know if laura if you've got any thoughts or insights from the people you you hang out with um from the people well i could say well, the reason I got introduced to B Corp and B Lab is because uh, I worked for a travel company prior to COVID that um, were trying to become a B Corp themselves. And I was the main driver of, of that uh, process. And um, I think it was the resource and the time that took me um, uh, to, by surprise. But the other thing that really um, uh, became a roadblock was um, leadership buy-in. 
they um, on the, you know, on the surface level thought this was all well and great. But as soon as you started trying to collect documentation to prove the, the claims that we were making, um, you know, we were told, no, can't provide that. P&Ls, no, you can't know that, Loz. Uh, so it is all about, um, you know, the buy-in as well um, is something that I experienced personally. Yeah. I think yeah, my, my only other, other reflection on that would be, you know, carve out time to do it. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, I, like, like I say, I vaguely remember, but, you know, me and my wife, we, got, we had a two-year-old daughter, we just moved into a house, um, startup business, you know, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, it was just kind of like getting to the end of the week going, oh, I really should look at that B Corp thing. Um, whereas actually, if you just kind of set yourself the time aside to just get on and do it, like I say, yeah. for most most small businesses, you can you can actually get through it relatively quickly. It's just mm. making that time to, to sit down and do it. Yeah. yeah. All right, Paula, what is the attrition rate? Um, what uh, percentage of companies drop off or do companies stay once they are in the B Corp family? Um, this is actually, there is attrition. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, but they're for di there's different reasons. Um, mm. so some, some companies might unfortunately not, um, survive, um, the three year cycle, uh, uh, until recertification. So they, they will drop off. Um, the attrition rate of when someone tries to achieve B Corp certification, um, from when they hit submit all the way to signing the dotted line with um, B Lab Global, I think it is about eighty percent make it through uh, these days. I think it is, which is excellent, um, and just shows the quality of business um, applying and the, um, you know, the amount of uh, effort um, folks like us, uh, uh, you all here today, are putting into the B Impact Assessment. Um, you know, you are uh, answering questions with authenticity um, and able to be uh, able to back it up with documentation. So our lovely standards teams can verify it. Um, do people um, DB Corp? Um, yes, that does happen. Um, and this could be for the reason I mentioned before. Sure, um, maybe it's not for everyone and they've just gone, yeah, that's cool. Um, loved, loved it, but um, got some other things to, to do. And that's perfectly fine as well. And then also if um, a, a company upon recertification, we uncover that potentially they're now working with a controversial industry or within a controversial industry, um, they, they may decertify as well. Okay. Thanks for answering. Nailed it. No worries. Happy um, to answer. So Dennis, back. Uh, thanks for this. We've been working towards this for a year and a half. New question. I'm keen to create staff ownership structure, but I'm struggling for useful advice. You have someone I can contact. And I've seen Tamara's got an answer in there. Yeah, Keegan. So there's a, there's a company, if you're, I'm presuming, is everyone from New Zealand on this call? Or is, is Lauren the only Aussie that's snuck in? <laughs> we'll let you come on. Infiltrated. You, can, you can come on over. <laughs> we'll Sorry. Open doors. Um, yeah, th there's a really cool company based in um, Auckland called Orchestra, um, and they can ba it's basically worker ownership packages in a box. You pay them some money, they make all that magic uh, happen, uh, and away you go. Um, other than that, um, obviously, uh, when Stephen Moe, uh, organizer extraordinaire of this event, isn't um, busy organizing events, running podcasts, and writing books, he is in his spare time a lawyer. Um, he might also have some advice um, around some options around that. But yeah, cer certainly we, we've done a bit of research on this because we've had a few clients not doing it immediately, but but looking to the future as part of that sort of betterment plan. Um, they've said, oh yeah, this is something we're, we're interested on. And um, yeah, orchestra is the best one that we found. And you've got, after that, you've got controversial industries questions up there as well. So look at that, we've got six minutes left. Any yes. more questions? We, we, we're going to be bang on time. Look at that, all know, that chat we from give... Erica beforehand about having to lock us down. Yeah, given the challenge, <laughs> don't go over time, said Erica. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions from the room? We've, we've got a couple more we can probably filibust yeah, um, to fill the last five minutes. Might as well. Um, when we were scheming on this, uh, Lauren, well, I, I say we, 
Lauren sent me a list of nine questions and I said, yeah, they sound great. And so Lauren did all, did all the work for this. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think there's, there's two questions here, the, the number six and seven that we had, you know, why now, what, why, why would you want to, you know, what, why is being a big Corp now um, suddenly a thing? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you, what do you reckon, Lauren? I think more than ever, um, there's demand for it. And it's not just externally and appeasing consumers and our customers, it's also internally. It is a, a, a mechanism increasingly being used as people, you know, source and procure. Um, people are holding um, businesses where they spend eight plus hours a day, um, at, you know, into account. They're holding them mm. to account. Um, and they want to work for and they want to work with um, value-aligned businesses. Um, so from, from that kind of standpoint, I think that's why now. Um, the other thing is, well, personally, I think we should just do it. <laughs> um, and the other thing is, is that more and more policy and regulation is coming through. And this is a way to just get ahead of the curve and prepare yourself for mm. what is inevitably coming. Um, Tim, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with all of that. Um, you know, it it never it never ceases to blow me away that the, the numbers of companies that we interact with, and you, and you sit and you sit down, and, and a couple of them you kind of go, mm, I, I think you're doing this for marketing. I kind of that's my initial impression, and then you get in and you meet the CEO, and they go, no, like actually, I'm all in on this, and we've already started changing the company to be better. We and we just want to go as far as we can, you know, with, with what we can do. So that, yeah, I'll, I'll go really metaphysical on this one. I, I love me a bit of Jungian psychology. And um, Carl Jung talked about, he, he was a psychotherapist or the, the original psychotherapist, him and Sigmund Freud. And he talked about how, um, so we're currently under the age of Pisces, moving to the age of Aquarius. And he said that the, the transition to the age of Aquarius is when man and, and humanity reaches its true and highest level of consciousness. And, and I genuinely think that there's something in the water here because we are seeing this massive transition of everyone just realizing that actually what I do does have a massive impact on mm -hmm. everything and everyone else. And I just think, I think there is, and, and I think COVID was a part of that, but I think there was a trend happening already where more and more people were actually feeling more deeply connected to everything around them. And I think that's something happening in the background, there's something in the water. Yeah. Definitely. Any final questions? We've got um, shows said um, it would be good to have support from government for companies to be certified. Um, yeah, so New Zealand Trade and Enterprise are all over B Corp. Um, they mm -hmm. totally understand um, the, be the benefit, you know, for certain exporters. Like I say, if you're in food and beverage, health and beauty, and you're exporting, you really, really, really should be having a good look at B Corp just based on the data of the companies that are certifying in the regions you're probably exporting to. Um, yeah, I think that'd be fair to say. And yeah, the, the Regional Business Partner Network um, is another um, uh, funding through MB, basically. So you can get um, help from people like me or Tamara with, with some co-funding, possibly, from, from a government entity. So um, interesting to see. Obviously, election around the corner. I don't know um, whether, whether B-Lab has been... I think talking to Andrew, the CEO, he sort of said, you guys tend to stay out of lobbying too much. Um, maybe sort of more like quiet discussions in corridors of power. We love a discussion. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I will plug the NZTE program, uh, Business for Good. Um, they're on their eighth cohort just starting this month, uh, which is amazing. It's the largest cohort I believe we've seen. Wow. Uh, so it's gaining momentum. There will be another cohort in the new year. So keep an eye out <clears throat> for NZTE Business for Good program. Yeah. Look at that. One minute spare. Mic drop. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and obviously, you if you if you want to talk B Corp, I'm sure Lauren's open um to a chat i'm always open to a chat um if you just yeah if you want, want my info you, you, well i'm sure i can put it in the chat there we go um okay erica over to you spell. Hilda, thank you so much, Lauren and Tim. And to show our appreciation, can we use our reactions in the chat and even body language? Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, we will now transition into the next um, session. If you are a parent...